Hello friends, this is Lou again. I was just looking at a, an old video I did earlier this year called Timeline. Anyway, I found that book. Here it is. It's called Timeline. See? And it's, uh, it's a pretty interesting book. It goes into a lot of things, but my main... Look at this. Look at this page. What in the world? That's that stuff that they celebrated and paid for with the booty from the destruction of Jerusalem. Well, anyway, in this timeline book, I've got a literal timeline here. And uh, look at this. It's actually opposite that one page I was just looking at. And it's a timeline. Whoa. See? I don't know if that's enough light for you to see. There's all these weird angles here, shadows. But anyway, <laughs> this timeline is loaded with uh, information about what happened originally and uh, in, in the world. You know, it, it uses scripture. What? Oops, I got this guitar strapped to me. Anyway, I was going to show you some elements that are in the book about uh, other things, but I think what, what I really want to show you today is a little bit about this myth, superstition really, about F Fufu Day. It's the sixth day of the week, they call it F-R-I Day, and uh, it's named after a Norse female deity. Anyway, they, uh, they have this... Uh, mythology going on that it's if, if ever it happens on the Roman calendar that the 13th falls on the sixth day of any week then it's bad favor or it's, it's you know horoscopes will tell you don't go you know well that's nonsense well this there's nothing going on like that but I want to tell you what's going on in the background of that but before I do that I want to thank you for letting me be myself. They encouraged me to do that in one of these comments. So I wanted to show you this guitar. This is a six string electric guitar. It's got three pickups. It's got a whammy bar. It's down here. Let me see if I can get you in the picture of it. That's a whammy bar. And it makes the bridge kind of rock or roll. And it causes the, the tones to vary. You know, like Here's the ninth fret. And it's a ninth chord, too. Uh-oh. That could be uh, building up to a 666, couldn't it? See, that's another thing. You know, they don't know what the mark of the beast is. But we have a video on that, Mark of the Beast. You can look at that. And the beast is not keeping you from buying and selling. It never says that. There's a riddle. And you just need to find out what that is. Find out what the elements are. And you can solve the riddle. But you see, they don't have all the elements. So they don't have wisdom. And they don't know when the Sabbath is. So we know that we don't buy and sell one day a week. But if you don't know that, then you've probably got the mark of the beast. <laughs> it's that simple, really. And I know they're, they're scaring you out here with uh, all kinds of fears. But we're not scared. We're not doing anything wrong. Uh, we just read 1 Peter chapter 2. And it says, obey the king. Obey, obey the governor. And they're not going to come after you. So don't be afraid. They're not going to make you eat pigs like Antiochus Epiphanes did. They're not doing that. Never will. So anyway, that ninth chord was kind of nice, wasn't it? Now that is an F sharp ninth. Now, <clears throat> down here on the second fret is F sharp. This is F sharp. Now watch this. If I do it like this, I'm playing an open E down here then go into F sharp with my finger and I'm going to play a familiar song to you by Sly and the Family Stone called Thank, Thank You for Letting Me Be Myself 
And uh, I'm only going to involve the second fret. Where's the second fret? There it is. That, the frets are these little bars. You put your finger behind them. There's the second fret. Here's the fourth fret. And I'm going to... No, that's the fifth fret. Come on. There's, there's the fourth fret. I'm only going to play notes between this fret or this position and that position. So it's just going to vamp between these two frets. Now watch this. But I am going to play that open E too. Like that. Okay. See how just that I'm kind of sloppy on this, but because I'm not uh, I'm not holding a pick. But you can get the idea. If you want to learn how to play this song, it's real simple. See what I did? I'm just basically playing these inner three notes on that real quick. And then you can come up here and scrub this ninth chord. So let me play it for you. Okay, this is this. See how easy that is? And you got yourself a little riff. Yeah, no. But I want to put this guitar down first of all. You have to take off your seat belt before you get out of the car. It's ugly when you drag the car into the store or the house. So you take your seat belt off first. Same way, same way with the guitar. You take your seat belt off. Hang it up on the guitar rack. Okay. Very important safety measures there. Don't trip over your cords. Yeah. Well, now, <clears throat> I showed you this book, Timeline, and we're going <laughs> to... I, you've got to watch this video. I did it earlier in this year. And uh, I'm explaining to you what the dogmas are of the Catholic circus over time. They start out at the year 300, and they go all the way up to 1950. Or no, 19, no, they go all the way up to like 2008. The last dogma that the circus put out was a papal bull about not pronouncing the name or singing the name or praying with the name Yahuwah would say that well they they outlawed it so anyway in this book fossilized customs this is my very first book now this is the 12th edition 365 pages and you'll find it at amazon.com but in this book look at the contents on this baby there's the contents page it goes on and on and there's a scary picture in the front. There's one of me as a younger man. I used to actually look different. See? Uh-oh. There's a picture of the book, too. And there is a picture of the meeting that the Pope had with JFK. President John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Look at that guy in the middle. He's the Black Pope. I mean, that's the very first page. So you can imagine what's going to happen after that. <laughs> and it moves several pages in. It's talking about Constantine. Uh-oh. And he designed a lot of the stuff that you are <coughs> caught up in. And, of course, I've got a lot of these uh, Illuminati symbols. You don't even know where that came from, probably. A lot of you do. But, you know, these are... Adam Weishaupt things. I used to be, well, I wasn't a Jesuit, but I was taught by them. And I didn't, they, they didn't get my mind. But I was watching them and go, what? No. Well, you know, there's some really, really odd beliefs that they have. And they just follow blindly. <clears throat> based on just severe authority that they have. Anyway, I wanted to mention this book. Because this book right here has turned a lot of people's lives right side up. And their families think they're upside down, but you've got to not freak out. You've got to calm down. 
you know you don't want to get you don't want to get too bizarre or too severe if anything you should be learning how to love because that's what the goal is it isn't knowledge Gnosticism is what's taken over really and uh, that's what we have to avoid but anyway today I wanted to reveal the secret behind this mythology about Fufu Day the 13th. Let's see if I can find that here. It's, yeah, there it is. Okay, this is the uh, way that F Day, or Fufu Day the 13th, became a thing. This is an excerpt from this book, Fossilized Customs. It's in this book. I mean, there's many other things, but... F day, the 13th. Now, preparation day for the weekly Shabbat is a term for every sixth day of the week. It's also used to refer to any day prior to an annual appointed time. Now, it might not be according to the days of the week. It, on an annual appointed time, you have a preparation day before that day. Now, six of the seven annual appointments are movable around on the on the calendar. One of which is the first day of matzah. Now that's set on the 15th, which begins unleavened bread for seven days. Obviously there are not three days and three nights between a weekly F day night at sunset and the Sunday morning event that people be, they see it in scripture on the first day of the week the women came to the tomb now Shatan or Satan has spin doctors and they've twisted it for us so that a Sunday morning supper sounds reasonable to them now because they just go ah, that's the Lord's Supper well actually it, uh, you don't have supper in the morning you have it one day a year as a Passover Seder you you have Passover once a year, and it is a supper because it happens in the evening. You know, as the day arrives, you know that's when the day begins at sunset. You don't have a sunrise or breakfast seder. You have a supper. It's it, it, it's a it's really not hard to understand, but there's a lot of confusion out there. Don't condemn people. Just try to explain it to them. Anyway. They've got these spin doctors, and they say that the Sunday morning supper that they instituted would justify the old pagan day of the sun. In other words, they're doing what the pagans did. They're meeting in the morning at a steeple or a pillar that's forbidden. Leviticus 26, verse 1, forbids pillars. You're not supposed to meet at these sun pillars. They're, you know, sexual objects. And we uh, don't go there. We don't go near them. But a lot of people do, and they're programmed to just get up and, we've got to get to the circus. Every week, they go to the, the pillar, and they have what they call uh, the Lord's Supper, which is actually every week. It, it's not really every week. It's supposed to be a, once a year, as I said. But they assemble, and they uh, call it the Day of the Sun, Sunday. Because Constantine did that. He outlawed the real day, of uh, the seventh day. Now, pagans assembled to worship the sun in the morning on the first day of the week. Because the entire Christian world has been programmed to believe the day of Yahushua's resurrection is permanently affiliated with the first day of the week. They do not observe Passover. Wow. Well... <clears throat> Now, he did rise on the first day of the week when the Sabbath was over. That happened at sunset. When he rose, no one saw him do it. But it, the next morning, the women noticed that the, the, the cave was open and they, the tomb, the stone was rolled away and he was gone, you know. But the idea, though, that he, he rose in the morning, well, no, he didn't rise at sunrise. But that's when they discovered the empty tomb. So in, in keeping with that idea, Christian world has uh, assumed 
that he arose in the morning. And they have all kinds of pictures and stained glass windows of him rising with the sun. And there's a lot of sun stuff behind them because they like the halos of the Hindus. They have, the sun worship is indicated by the halos. Now, Shatan, or Satan, bruised the heel of Yahusha. That was a fulfillment. The myth that Yahusha died on F day is not real either. And not the preparation day for the high Sabbath of Matzah. Well, he did die on the preparation day for the high Sabbath, but not the weekly Sabbath. A lot of people have been trying to work that out. Now, in Yehuchanan, or John, chapter 19, verse 31, we see how this superstition got started because it says it was the preparation day for the high Sabbath. It's talking about a high Sabbath, not a weekly Sabbath. The 13, which is in the, in the, in the Roman calendar, it doesn't have any attachment to anything. It's not a, the real moon that they use to establish a month. They just calendate, you know, the days out of nothing. It's not attached to anything but the little balloon that's hanging on the uh, Pope's uh, mailbox. It, it has no foundation. It, it is absolutely not tied to reality at all. Which The 13 represents the fact that there were 13 men present at the meal the previous evening. The 13th day of each Roman month has no connection with the real moon, nor the number of men present at the meal. It has nothing to do with it. It's hard to understand how the smoke and mirrors masked this, but they did it. They got away with it. And all the scholars are, you know, they're aware of some of the problems, but they just have to kind of ignore them and go, well, tradition will take care of itself. And they've been doing it for centuries. They blinded the eyes of populations with the, these, uh, these teachers, and they've dislocated the correct annual observances. They've not only dislocated them, they completely ignored them. And... Uh, the unfulfilled ones in the seventh month of the Hebrew calendar are going to get their attention one day. They're going to be coming to the Nazarene and they're going to be asking us, tell us what is happening. So you need to look at the what they call the Jewish calendar and although there are details in there that are not correct, we, uh, we notice that Shavuot is quite often counted incorrectly, but it, it is a reflection of the resurrection of Yahusha, which is Bikarim, counting 50 days to the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, which is actually a, a way of counting, and that's how that's established. Bikarim is what Yahusha was doing in the morning on the first day of the week. It's the resurrection. It's the wave fruit, a wave the wave sheath offering. The wave sheath offering was predicted by the wave sheath of the barley that was waved before Yahuwah in the temple. And that was to be done by the high priest. Well, Yahushua became the high priest at, at his resurrection, but they didn't know it. You know, it's, he's t He supersedes all high priests. And he's a, of the Mel Melchizedek order, which we also are a, a priests of that order as well, because we follow our Messiah. He's a, a high priest. Well, pick up this book and see what you can get out of it. And try to watch that video that I made earlier this year. It's on my channel, Lou White, and it's called Timeline. And there's also a book which you can order from Amazon.com or tourzone.net. Anyway, the, the fun just keeps on going, doesn't it? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.